So let's go ahead and get ready to do our first little demo. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flip over to Expression Blend, make a little sample project, and just kind of uh, kind of kick things around a little bit. So let me just go ahead and flip over here. Okay. So here was that uh, screenshot that you saw a couple of slides back, and I think for this one, maybe I'll just leave this open here. We'll just kind of take a look at what's what we get. Pretend for a second though that this is a blank slate. Okay, when you first fire a blend, you're going to see a screen that looks like this. And this is where you can just kind of pick a brand new project or open an existing project. Let's just say, for example, you wanted to make a brand new project. So this is where you're going to see a couple of different options. Um, and you're really, you know, again, you're talking, you're either going to be doing a WPF program or you're going to be doing a Silverlight program. So let's say you're going to make a executable for WPF. You just want to go here. Of course, we want to forget that this ever happened. All we care about is Silverlight 2. <laughs> uh, based on whichever one you pick, notice how you can specify your language of choice. So I'll, I'll make a brand new one in a little bit, but for right now, we'll just take a look at uh, this existing project. Okay. So first thing that we need to look at is over here on the left, we have this area which is just a, a palette of different widgets and tools similar to what you might find in the Visual Studio Toolbox. Okay, But notice how some of these options have a really tiny triangle on the lower right corner. That's kind of your cue that if you were to click and hold, you're going to see related options pop up here. Right? So for example, here are all your different panels. Well, not all, but here are some suggested panels. Here are some suggested text areas suggested input items. Okay, Now from this little simple area you're not going to find every possible control put here by default. And that's what we have down here, this little guy called the Asset Library. As soon as you click on this it's going to pop up a list of a whole bunch of other controls that you could add to this toolbox. Um, you'll probably always want to click Show All. Why that's not done by default I'm not sure. But this will give you a real good list of the core system controls from WPF or Silverlight if you pick a Silverlight application. Um, there are also ways here to kind of play around with custom controls if you've uh, incorporated those into your project. If you have some styles that you've already created in your application, you can find them here. Right? So we don't have to worry about any of those for right now. But just remember that this is where you can kind of select your item and then once you've selected, for example, the ellipse, I could come over here and just start to draw on top of my editor. Right? Now I don't have to do that right now, so I'll just kind of get rid of that. Now the next thing I want to point out is over here on the right-hand side. Okay? Notice how, very similar to Visual Studio, Blend has this little project area. So I made a Silverlight application for this demo, so we can see that I have my page in my code file. I have my application derived class and he has his code file. I can see that I have a bunch of assembly references that have already been set for me. Right? So this part feels probably pretty similar to a Visual Studio application, but remember Blend is not a code editor. So if I were to go behind this C Sharp file and double click, you'll notice that Visual Studio launches. Right? So all of a sudden now I'm uh, I'm kind of operating on two different two different tools for the same project here. So keep that part in mind. Now right next to the project area, oh, and by the way, um, from this project area you can do very similar things that you would in Visual Studio. So I could right click on this project, I could add new items and existing items like maybe a brand new user control. Notice how I can add assembly references just like I might in Visual Studio, okay? But I'm probably guessing most graphical artists aren't going to be over here too often. They're going to be more concerned about this area, okay, the properties editor. Um, based on what you select in your property editor, or I should say on your visual designer, the property editor is going to kind of change, okay? So we see here that I selected a particular stack panel. And from this editor, I could configure various aspects of this little stack panel, right? And uh, I'll be kind of drilling through some of these as we go along. But you can see, like, I've already set up a color for that stack panel. 
So as I change it, you can see all that red on the designer changes quite a bit, right? There are areas over here for applying transformations, which I don't need now, but you know I could tinker with this if I really wanted to. See how I'm skewing my panel right there? Okay. So this little properties editor is much more elaborate than we have in Visual Studio. Again, really kind of geared towards those with a graphical mindset. And the final part over here is the resources area. Um, and this is just all of your different resources, right? So I actually have a couple that are already part of this project. And we'll talk about making resources by hand in just a couple seconds here. Right? So we'll, we'll see more of this as we go along. Now, the next thing is when you're on the visual designer, notice how we have a couple of different ways to view stuff, right? Right now, I'm exclusively seeing the design mode. But I could also view all the XAML in the background. And I can also get kind of a split perspective view if I want to kind of see both areas. Now with Blend 2.0, I'd like to point out that we have no IntelliSense when we are working with the XAML editor. So let's say, for example, I'm down here inside of this image control. And I want to start typing in some more properties. You can see how I'm clicking the space. And it's not showing me any kind of IntelliSense at all. Even if I start to type, like let's say I want to, um, let's say I don't already have height. If I were to start typing in here, height, see I got nothing, right? So this again is not meant to be a direct XAML editor. You know, let the tool do it for you, right? If you really have to tweak things that are generated by the tool and you're using Blend 2.0, you're going to be better served opening this project in Visual Studio where I could get my IntelliSense back. So let me just go back to my design view here. Now the last little part that I want to show for this just first look is this guy over here called Objects and Timeline. This is probably one of the most annoying aspects of Blend 2.0, which thankfully has been fixed in Blend 3.0. Okay? If you look over here in my Objects and Timeline perspective, you're going to see how there is one particular thing that always has a yellow border around it. Right? So right here, there's my yellow border. Here's a different yellow border. The yellow border is key. And to activate a yellow border, you got to double click. Okay? If you don't double click, if you just do a single select right here, it's going to really change the operation. And this can make things quite unintuitive. Okay, so let me try to clarify this. So notice again how this nested stack panel has the, um, the yellow border right now. And on my designer, I can see, yep, sure enough, there's this big yellow border for that particular panel. The reason you want to pay attention to the yellow border is, if I were to double click to add a new button, Whichever thing has the yellow border is the area that it's going to be inserted into. So you can see how I just have this new button that got wedged into my selected stack panel. Now, this is what I was doing forever, and I was driving myself completely insane. You know, I would come over here and just like click on user control. So I'm thinking, yeah, well, that's not a good example. Let's say I, I selected my layout root, and I'm thinking, okay, I want to add in a brand new button. So I double click. Right? And it went to the selected thing in the yellow. Even though over here I selected layout root, I thought because this guy had the yellow border, it put it here. Okay? So if you really wanted to add something to that layout root, you gotta double click it so it would get the yellow border. And now when I do this, okay, now it actually added it to that particular last chunk of the layout root. So just one little thing that can probably drive you insane if you're not careful. Okay, so keep that in mind.